Obviously, everybody's disappointed with the performance and, and the result. Um, um, good chat here, you know, went over a few things. Um, first thing is, is there's no panic, you know, the thing is we've been in a good run. Uh, I don't think anybody's seen it coming. You know, we, we were, as the manager said, we were pretty unrecognisable. The fact that we didn't play and we didn't compete. Um, but the players are well aware. And the beauty is that we've got, we've got games coming up, so we've, got, we've not got a lot of time to dwell. We've got to push it to the back burners and, and move forward. Colin, was it a frank exchange in terms of the debrief? No, it was what we was expecting, obviously. We knew that we didn't perform on the day and that the result and the performance wasn't good enough. So um, when everything goes well, you watch clips of your, your team doing well. So when, it, when things are bad, that you have to take the criticism as it comes. Gary, would you accept that even with uh, 15, 16 games to go, that certainly up until the split now, there's little of any wriggle room for Rangers to drop more points? No, absolutely. We need to be pretty perfect. Um, we're, we're well aware of that. We know that we've got a rough idea what the points tally's required to to be successful. And you're right, you know, there's, there's very little wriggle room. Yeah, Gary, is it frustrating when you are on that such a good run, you say you, don't, you didn't see it coming? What do you put it down to them? What, what do you have to do to make sure it doesn't happen again? Well, the thing is, we, we go, we, you know, the, the, the management, you question themselves as well, you know, the preparation, the build-up, the, the due diligence that's done before every game, but that, that was all put in place. Um, first and foremost, you've got to say Hearts did pretty well. Their game plan was good, but we, and even though we didn't play particularly well, I thought we'd, we'd two, three, not half chances, good chances, not guilt edge, but, but big chances in the first half to go in with the lead. And in the game where we didn't play that well, we, we did get in the lead. So maybe a wee bit of recognition, a wee bit of experience would maybe tell you that you can't play brilliantly well every game. It's not going to go your way every game. So the wee bit of a recognition of when you're not playing well, maybe just to to, to recognise that and just maybe play in a different way. Do you think the winter break has slowed or stopped your momentum? Well, it, it's if you if you looked at the three performances since we come, since we come back, you would you would have to say that we've not performed per, particularly well since we come back. But I thought the winter break went well. I thought we worked hard. The, the boys did um, everything. Asked of them over there. We went over a lot of sort of you know just ticked the boxes and other things we've been trying to produce on the pitch. Prior to the break, you know, we're going over old stuff. Um, so I think the winter break went well, but we've not performed since we came back. That's that's plenty. Do you try and use this as a motivation? And now people are questioning Rangers: Have they got the bottle? Can they do it? Do you know, well, the thing is, for me, you know, having having worked with the majority of these guys for for eighteen months and, and maybe maybe a wee bit longer now, yeah, I know the type of person that's in the dressing room. So there's no time to dwell on the on the poor result. It is only one of you know, if it's a really good run of results, to be perfectly honest. But I think you will see a reaction. I think Stephen described it as the most disappointing setback that he's had in his time here. Do you feel that this is now the biggest test of character for the players and the staff that they've had? Possibly. But then in, in moments like this, you've got to trust what, you, what we've been doing. You know, we, we can't just think, well, because one bad result, it's just a massive shift or a big change. You know, we, the, the, the way we've performed and the way the lads have played, you know, and the tactic that's been used has, has served as well. Yes, we're always looking to tweak little things here and there, but we've got to trust what we're doing, we've got to trust each other. Confidence is still there ahead of tomorrow night? Absolutely. Connor, there was obviously there was enough warnings after last season, uh, the slow start after the winter break. Why, why do you think the, the team hasn't hit the standards at the start of this year? Um, I don't know. Obviously, the Shremra game, it's... There's a lot of people behind the ball. We won the game, we had control of the game. Um, the St Mirren game, I thought, was very similar. Um, and at the end of the game, we were disappointed in the change room that we didn't do more, that we didn't perform better, but we got three points and we went into Hearts away knowing um, from the game earlier in the season it was going to be a tough game, but knowing we had to turn up, we had to be brave. It might not be the prettiest game. And like, um, like we said in that change room after the game, that some days you're not going to be able to beat everybody in a football match but the one thing we can't accept is losing the physical side of the game, getting run over. 
losing first and second balls and I think that's what let us down on Saturday Sunday. The manager didn't miss in his post-match kind of analysis, you know, so maybe up to eight passengers were wrong naming them. What sort of effect does that have on players within the dressing room? Does it give you a bit of a joke? Well, it has to, yeah. We have a game again tomorrow. Another big game, another league game that gets us three points and we all need to be ready to go again because um, there's no time to sit and dwell on that game. We've got another three games in a week, so um, we need to go and get nine points and we know that in the changing room. Gary, how bad is Ryan Jack's injury? Ryan's just had a little, uh, a, just a little reoccurrence of, 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 of an injury he's had in the past, just in his, in his, in his calves. But the... Uh, we're hoping it's not as, as bad as, as we first thought. Can we get a rough time school and what do you think that might be? <coughs> They're talking maybe 10 days, two weeks. Two weeks. Do you think a boost will be having a Fred Morelos back for the team? Well, that goes, with, that goes without saying, you know, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a big player, he's a key player at the club. Um, disappointed to have lost him, you know, due to suspension again, but I'm sure he'll come back firing. Do you feel the team have missed him since he's been out? I think any, player, any team would miss a player like Alfred. Does it show how key discipline is and others can argue with the right No, absolutely. You know, and moving forward, the discipline's got to be, be good and, and spot on as well. Does somebody make you think again about potentially needing to add maybe one more before the end of the window to, to help you in this type of one? I think I mean, when you're in windows, the, well, certainly here, if, if we're continually looking, you know, you know clubs, clubs like Rangers and big clubs across the world are continually looking. To, to improve. And at any given moment when, the, when an opportunity arises, we've got to be there and ready to strike. So that goes, you know, in this window, the next window, the summer, you know, it's it's a it's an ongoing thing. We're always looking. Is there a quote this morning about Brandon Barker and Jordan Jones potentially leaving to be anything? Well the thing is they are they are they're two players that were brought here to, to try and make a difference, you know, to try and make us better. You know, it's very much the case that we all the coaching staff wanted those guys there. They're, they're, they're two players who we thought could influence games when it's very, very tight. Um, recently, the pair of them have been injured. And, and it's up to them to show the management, the manager and the management group they've got to do more to, to get in that team. Do you think you've seen six, six or seven what they white players in the summer? Maybe not a lot of them have actually featured that much. Do you play a bit in that? As I, as I, as I said, the, you know, the, Jordan and, Bo and Brandon both have been injured and since coming back they've got to show more to get in the team. What's the situation though, Gary? Is there scope for them to potentially... Well, yeah, they're, they're, if, they, if, they show, if they show us, they're, 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 they'll play. With the, wind, with the wind approaching on Friday, we've basically got one game. No, no. The, th the thing is, they they will if they show in the training, they will they will they will get an opportunity. Right. And just on Ryan Jack, um, you said ten days. We said ten days before he's back training, or ten days before he can play again. Well, to be fair, I'm not I'm not ginned up on the the actual from the physios. The uh, the facts are that he's he's got, he's got a little problem in his calf, and then that's the sort of time that that it's took in the past to to recover. And well, just on the potential incomings, do you think you might be doing something? As I said, we're continually looking. Uh, Matt, there's well been for uh, John Flanagan at half time. Do you think he's potentially more suited to replacing Tavernier in these sort of games we've got a lot of the ball? Yeah. I would I would agree with you that Matt did very well when he when he came on the on the pitch. Um, I thought he showed a bravery to get on the ball. And in possession I thought he I thought he used the ball very well. So yeah, he's he's got a good chance. What about Rob Spectre, Gary? What do you expect? Aye, Brooks. Well, watching watching the bits of Ross County you know, at, at Celtic Park, they, they had opportunities. They they countered well. Um, they were organised. So we're expecting a tough game. They'll come to Ibrox and make it try and make it difficult. Get bodies behind the ball. But the interesting thing at Celtic Park was, you know, on the regains they actually they got men forward and created a few chances. So we've got to be wary of that. In terms of analysing the men playing at Celtic Park the weekend, is that maybe the perfect game to, to look to when preparing? To face yeah, on occasions that's that's been used, yeah, because the, you know the, as you, as you really rightly say, they'll, they'll possibly try and use the similar tactic at, at, at Ibrox. When do you expect James back, Barry? Yeah. Yeah, the word with James again, he's a he's ten days a couple of weeks away, but he's he's back on the grass though, and he's he's moving pretty well, so he's a fit lad. He might get back quicker.